If you needed social media likes at least once every 15 seconds or else you'd die, how would you accomplish that? That's the question asked by Mullet Mad Jack, a new boomer shooter indie game coming out from Hammer 95 Studios. In this game, you play as Jack, who is tearing through a building full of hostile robots to save a princess, while your violence is live streamed to millions of viewers who cheer you on with likes. And while this game occasionally looks like an epilepsy test that would be administered by a guy named Dr. Bob who runs his practice out of a Denny's basement, I did my absolute darndest to grab every bit of lore and contextual information I could from the demo so I could present to you everything I know about Mullet Mad Jack's backstory, setting, and lore. Mullet Mad Jack takes place in a retro-futuristic society in the year of our lord 2096, in which humans have evolved past homo sapien status by merging with the internet. This probably had the benefits of having the world at your fingertips and interconnectivity like we've never seen before, but the side effect is that humans need a dopamine hit every few seconds or else they just die, which requires you getting likes on your social media profiles or buying yourself something nice off the internet. So basically this would be a utopia for the most annoying people you know who act like consumerism and Instagram are personality traits. Also important to note is that in this future, AI started participating in the economy autonomously, and this resulted in what are called robo-billionaires. As the name implies, these are functioning members of society who are billionaires and also just happen to be robots. There are roughly 3,200 billionaires in the world, and this has caused an oligarchy in which the world is completely ruled by a cartel of these evil robo-billionaires and their robot henchmen. These robots all have human tissue grafted onto them, which initially made me think that maybe they were humans who took technology too far, but when I asked the devs about this, they said that they are just robots who are obsessed with looking like humans, so they took the body parts for themselves. Oh, and also, they have sensitive balls too, as there's an upgrade that gives you critical damage to that area. So it's interesting that humans have merged more with technology, and robots have tried to become more human. Maybe they'll meet in the middle sometime down the line. But the fact that they are AI means that they probably don't need to constantly infuse their brains with dopamine, which is why they were able to rise to the top of the hierarchy and essentially make humans subservient unto them. The context clues in Mullet Mad Jack seem to hint at a very consumerist, distracted, and terminally online human society, which as I mentioned probably left the door wide open for these robots to take over. There's a brand that is simply just named Consume that sells clothing and stickers much like the vanity brand Supreme that we have today. There's also a product called Life Soda, which is branded and advertised specifically as something that gives you a dopamine kick to add seconds to your short but volatile lifespan. But cans of soda and Mullet Mad Jack's posters are priced at $9.99, so inflation must have hit them like a truck. Another important thing about this timeline is either Japan did something to gain more influence over American culture, or everybody's just like an ultra weeb. Most posters are presented in both English and Japanese, or are purely in Japanese, katanas are one of the main weapons that you can use, and the cinematics are very reminiscent of 80s and 90s anime. You may be thinking, well how do you know that this is America and not just Tokyo? Because there are ads for a democracy package for sale, which is just a bunch of ammo in front of red and white stripes. I know my country when I see it because I'm a damn patriot. Also, the 2090s seem to have brought with it an intense nostalgia for the late 1980s and early 1990s, which, as we all should know, nostalgia is just late-stage capitalism's way of making us spend money on things that remind us of when times were better, but in reality, we were just younger and more blind to the horrors of society surrounding us. Anyway, we've got mullets, we've got a DeLorean, and we've got a gosh dang Tamagotchi, except for in Mullet Mad Jack, it's just called an Oh My Goshi. As is the case in today's society, in the world of Mullet Mad Jack, some of the most respected and wealthiest humans are those who have the highest supply of dopamine available to them, otherwise known as influencers. However, the popularity of these influencers comes at a cost because they have a target painted on their back. The central conflict in Mullet Mad Jack is between the humans and robots as they do not live together in harmony. While the humans were too busy getting dopamine hits in order to survive, the robots were gaining power over them by essentially selling them those dopamine hits through their companies. Also, as I mentioned earlier, the robo-billionaires are a criminal organization, and a big part of their business model involves kidnapping influencers. Whether this is to ransom them for money or to harvest their dopamine is unknown at this point, but it's a pretty common occurrence. It's so common, in fact, that the humans have learned how to monetize and make a spectacle out of getting the abducted influencers back. The Peace Corps is a group of vigilantes fighting against the robo-billionaire ruling class through an app that they use to hire freelance vigilantes known as moderators. 
You play as Jack, one of these moderators, and you are contacted at the very beginning of the game's story when the world's most popular influencer princess with a following of over 2 billion gets taken by the robots. You were told that you need to save the princess and if you do so, your reward will be a pair of consumed brand sneakers. I'm not kidding. You track them down to Nakamura Plaza and are told that she's held on the 10th floor. Jack's phone is connected directly to his bloodstream and his mission to moderate the robots is live streamed to his viewers who crave bloodshed and will reward Jack with likes. However, since these people need dopamine hits every few seconds to survive, they will only reward Jack with likes if he manages to take out robots in quick succession and therefore make a spectacle out of it. Meaning if there is too long of a lull, Jack's dopamine will run out and his heart will stop. Which is kind of funny, sad, and on the nose that the survival of the princess is entirely dependent on how cool Jack makes it look. Like, the populace cares more about the entertainment value of it all than the well-being of another person. It says a lot about society and really makes you think. After each floor, the Peace Corps supplies Jack with an upgrade of his choice, and it's worth noting that the Peace Corps at the end of the day is just another cog in the machine trying to make money. These upgrades cost Jack actual money that they're deducting from his pay, they talk a lot about union busting, and the Peace Corps representative always has something to share with you about how hard work gets you better pay. Just normal HR corporate BS. The Peace Corps, just like the viewers, are more interested in making sure that the rescue mission is a monetizable spectacle. Whether or not the influencer is saved seems to be secondary to their goals. And now let's talk about Jack. The press kit for Mullet Mad Jack mentions that Jack's priorities are to rescue the princess, preserve his reputation, and entertain the viewers. So it seems like this isn't his first rodeo and that he's been a moderator before, seeing as he has a reputation to uphold. Also, assuming that the priorities are listed in order, he seems like the person who is most concerned with the influencer's well-being. Though it could just be because he has money and sneakers on the line. After he tears through 10 floors of robots, Jack encounters and fights a robo-billionaire, defeats it, takes out its eye, and then goes to rescue the princess, only to find out that she's been taken up another 10 floors and the cycle repeats. However, at the end of the first set of 10 floors, the lead robo-billionaire says something that is incredibly interesting and has big implications for Mullet Mad Jack's lore. He tells Jack that he's in a video game and that he's being controlled by somebody else. Whether this was done to try to psych Jack out and get in his head, or if the robots are advanced enough to have learned that they're in a video game is uncertain, but it really makes you think, huh? Mullet Mad Jack's lore is an excellently goofy and relevant social commentary on where we are today and where we're headed as far as our need for spectacle, validation, and buying stuff. And I think a hyperactive boomer shooter that's obsessed with nostalgia, bright lights, and feeding you dopamine hits is the perfect vessel to deliver this story. Every time I struck another robo-billionaire off of the census was a certified hell yeah moment. I myself felt pretty called out by Mullet Mad Jack as somebody who is very likely going to hit publish on this video and then spend the next several hours furiously refreshing my analytics page. Just trying to get that feedback and validation. But thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that if we were to live in the world of Mullet Mad Jack that this video would have given you a dopamine hit to extend your life by 15 seconds. And if you don't want me to die of a dopamine shortage, feel free to hit that like button and subscribe if you're into hearing about lore of whatever game I'm playing that week. But if we never see each other again, that's totally okay. I hope you guys genuinely have a really good day.